Cisco ICE wireless use cases. This is use case number one, and we're going to look at Meraki MX 802.1x. So the first policy that we're going to build is an authorization policy that's going to deny domain admins from logging in to anything using wireless. Um, and this will be higher up in the list, um, obviously, to, to mitigate that risk. And the outcome, obviously, is deny access. The next use case will be a sales user using 802.1x specifically, uh, and we're going to permit access. Then we're going to block authentication. So this is an interesting use case that I came uh, up uh, or just came across recently uh, where someone wants to block certain users from even being able to authenticate. So based on maybe user um, uh, regex, right? B bad user as an example. Then we'll get into HR. We're going to restrict that by Mac list as well. So the user has to be from HR and in that allowed Mac list. And then we finally have a uh, block wireless, all wireless using a Mac block list as well uh, with an authorization policy. So you can notice there's one here that we're going to do uh, based on the authentication policy, not the authorization policy. So let's dig into this a little bit more. So real quick, uh, the environment's been built, um, but uh, I just want to show you that I do have Active Directory. Obviously, you can you have multiple domains in, included in here, and you can build your identity source sequences to references, uh, you know, one or or more identity sources. Um, and so, you know, there's a couple parameters here. Groups we're going to pull in, right? They're going to pull the uh, security identifier out of Microsoft, so we have a reference. Um, I have domain admins, domain users, HR, and sales. Now, in this case, we're not using domain users, but uh, if we did, this might be a reason why that domain admins policy was further up. Now we'll look at the network access devices, so the NADs, and we have the Meraki using the internal interface IP address to communicate with ICE. We'll talk in a, a, a future video around the dashboard, Meraki dashboard NAD that I have there. So again, nothing real special here. All we're going to have is um, radius um, set up. While we go into policy, I'm just going to jump in here. It, here's the access points that I have enabled. So 802.1x, they're going to point to um, the ICE server for authentication and authorization. OK. So let's dig into the uh, policies. So again, just uh, Reiterate, you can see we have blocked authentications at the top there. That's going to identify any user that has the name bad in it at the beginning and then ends with anything after that. Uh, we're going to deny access. We also are using Active Directory here for, for wired and, and wireless 802.1x or potentially wired and wireless 802.1x. So here's our first policy, the domain admins, right? That's at the top. Um, and so if we hit that policy and we've logged in as a domain admin user, we're going to deny access. So pretty simple. The next one is a, a Mac access list. So this is basically saying that if you are identified in this uh, Mac access list, um, in this case, you're going to be blocked. So this is a blocked list, right? Um, HR user so it's got to come in with 802.1x it's got to be in the allowed mac uh, access list or identity group and it has to be a member of hr okay um, and we go down there's sales etc but we've already kind of walked through that if we go and very quickly look at that mac allowed list you can see i do have one device that hr can log in through and it happens to be an apple device so i'm going to use a windows box as well as a apple device to log into wireless and um, and again you have to be a user there's that sales again permit access nothing really special here now we get into an open ssid um, where we have wireless access we are using radius service type login um, as well. And what we're going to do is um, we can actually um, build out an authorization profile, right? And the permit access, deny access, we're all authorization profiles. But in this case, we can build one out maybe a little bit unique here where um, 
you know, maybe the platform has limitations on how long they allow that user to log in for. And so you might want to restrict the, the, the timeline. Um, I'm not saying that's the case with Meraki. Um, I'm just saying this is an option for you to do. And so here I've, I've got it where the session will time out for 120 seconds um, once logged in, right? So a good way of adding another layer to ensure that if you wanted users only connected for a certain period of time, then you can bump them off and, and they'd be forced to re-authenticate. Okay, so now we've logged into our logs here. Now we'll log into a machine um, very quickly, do some testing to see these, these actual use cases um, be realized. Okay, so go to wireless here. And our first one is going to be, we're gonna block domain admin. So we'll log in as administrator. And remember, we don't care what device they're coming from. If you try to log in as a domain admins, you should get blocked, right, based on policy. Okay, so it says can't connect. Let's see what the actual result is. So look at that, we can see it is blocked uh, we can see the authentication and the authorization policy that was in play. So default wireless block list domain admins, right? Deny access. Okay, so that worked, right? That was that first policy that we saw. And it was successful. If we refresh the hits here, you can see that there's one hit um, there, that, which makes sense. Okay, so the next use case is logging in with sales. So we'll go ahead and connect. Sales one, put in that magic password. And we should get authenticated here, right? Based on policy, unless we get hit by something further up, like a deny, and we did get connected. So let's just double check and we can see that it did hit that 802.1x wireless sales AD and the permission was, was allowed. So we'll just double check that here. Now remember, you can, you can add scalable group tags here as well or security groups. Um, you can also be very restrictive, right? Dynamic um, uh, or downloadable controls can be put in place in the user. So that, that worked as expected. So we've tested the main admins, we've tested sales. Let's go into the block authentication. Now I've logged in using an iPhone, so I couldn't show it because I had to be connected on wireless to show the actual process on the iPhone, but Anyways, um, you can see here bad user uh, was denied authentication uh, based on block authentication and same with bad user too. So perfect, those two use cases worked out and what this does is prevent the user from even authenticating to Active Directory as an example, right? Um, and blocks them outright. Um, so it's not like they've authenticated past authentication. Now they have to hit an authorization policy. There's a couple levels of, of, of security here that um, if an authorization policy was not done properly, it could allow access, right? But by denying them to authenticate, we've actually eliminated their access. So let's go to into this HR use case, right? And so this has to be coming from an asset that is coming uh, not only as an HR user, but also as part of that identity group, right? That 802.1x allowed identity group. So we've added that MAC address to that. So that Apple device, as an example, was um, added to that identity group, and then they can log in if they are a member of the HR group. So you can see that finishes what they... 87 and so if we go and look at our endpoint groups we can see there's that 87 and it's an apple device 
So we could remove it here uh, uh, and then that Apple device is obviously no longer able to log in. We can remove the user and then they're no longer to, uh, able to log in. So there's a couple of controls that we can invoke on that user if we didn't want that specific user or that um, uh, device connecting. Here we're trying to connect with HR again, um, coming from a Windows asset and this should be denied. And you can see there's a deny access here. Right, and the reason why it's denied is is because that MAC address is not in the list and there's no other policy that it meets other than the default, which happens to, to be a deny access policy. So the one thing that's really cool about ICE is the power, right? The, how creative you can get in building out these conditions to identify um, assets and, and, and when I say assets, I'm, I'm talking the contextual side of the asset, which includes user, how they're connecting, um, you could profile the device, etc. So we've done domain admins, we've done um, sales block authentication for bad user, we've done uh, HR, and now we're looking at the Mac block list. So you can see here's a, a Mac address here. Now, if we go in to groups and we add this Mac into that block list that we have, that's pre-built. And we go ahead and add this policy. What's gonna happen now is when we go to that Windows box that we used previously, and we try to log in as sales one, which was successful earlier, it should hit that policy and block the user from connecting from this device. Now, if they had another device, they'd be okay, right? It, it provided we didn't have any other control further up. And you can see, again, deny access, right? And you can see they hit that identity group that blocks that MAC address or that we're using to identify that MAC address in a block list. Okay, so cool. Um, so how quick can you revert that, right? So they've been denied access. Maybe they weren't supposed to be in that Mac list, right? And so you get a ticket and, and there's search buttons that you can very quickly look at exactly what took place, just kind of what we did there, but you can actually search on, on certain entities. And what I'll do is I'll just remove both of these. Um, reason being is, is that uh, I might forget that I've added them later when I do some testing. So let me remove both of these. And that's it, right? It's just removed just right now. Let's go ahead and, and try to log in again as sales one. And if everything works as expected, we should get access this time. Connected, that's awesome. Let's just make sure we're hitting the right policy here. So we see sales one, yeah, logged in. And the policy is, there it is, 802.1x wireless sales AD permit access. Awesome. So anyways, some cool ways. I'm going to talk a little bit more about ICE and some policies and being a little bit more creative, but pretty cool stuff.